Section 7.3, the mean and standard deviation of x bar, the sample mean. So we have a theorem, the mean and standard deviation of x bar. Um, if a random sample of size n is taken from a population with mu and sigma, so these are values from the population, then mu x bar is mu, so the average of the averages basically. So remember we're looking at these samples of samples. So we have lots of averages and we make a new sample. So on average, my average should be the average. And then sigma changes, the standard deviation will change. So sigma x bar will be sigma over the square root of n. So this is the standard deviation of the sample means, not the original data. And it has less variation. If we think about taking an average, right, the averages are going to be closer together than the original data. So the means have a smaller standard deviation. There's less spread. So let's look at an example of how this works. Example one, suppose a population has a mean of 20, so mu is 20, and a standard deviation of 5, sigma is 5. If we take random samples of size 53, then what? So n is 53, we'll answer some questions. The expected value for the sample mean would be, um, and that would be the average, right? We expect the average. So we're gonna say mu of x bar, the little symbol just reminds me that it's not the population, it's the sample means, happens to be the same as the population, so it's 20. On average, we expect to get 20. What's the standard deviation of the sample means? So it's no longer the same, it's less spread out. So sigma of x bar is sigma over square root n. It'll be less spread out than the population. The means should be closer to the middle, right? They won't, the outliers kind of get hidden a little bit more. So we're going to take our standard deviation of five and divide by square root of 53. And remember we like five digits. And I get 0 0.68680, that will be five digits. So it's much smaller than the standard deviation of five. And that's again because the means are less spread out. Um, and then what shape? Remember, we like to know the shape. So what shape distribution will these means take on? Um, we don't know yet. We're going to hope we get that normal population again, but we don't know. So we'll talk about that later. So let's try another example. So we're going to look at the prices of all 55-inch HDD TVs. So the 55-inch doesn't really tell us anything for statistics. It just tells us the size of the TV. Um, but we do know this is a population because of the word all. So they have a mean of 1282, so mu is 1282, and a standard deviation of 305.19, and that'll be sigma. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the mean and standard deviation of possible sample means. So again, this is when we're taking averages and making a new sample of size 20. So we're taking a sample of 20, finding the mean, and we're repeating over and over and over, and we're making a sample of all those averages. So the average should be the same, the mu of x bar, the average of the averages is still 1282, and then the standard deviation of x bar, sigma of x bar, will be the original sigma over square root n, which is 30519, over square root 20. And we get, a, we should always will get a smaller standard deviation, it's less spread out. We get 68.243. So we have five digits. So we can find expected error like before. What is the expected error when using the mean um, from a random sample of size 20 as your estimate? 
So expected error, if we go back a couple sections, that was two standard deviations. And we're gonna use X bar because we're using the mean from samples, the sample mean. So we're gonna use the new standard deviation because we're looking at sample means. So this all goes back to the within two standard deviations. So we'll just do two times 68.243 and I get 136.486. And it's measuring money. It's basically telling me that if we calculate an average if our, from a sample, our average for any sample should be plus or minus 136.486 within the real average. Right? It should make sense. Samples never get exactly the correct average, but we should be within 136. So we're not looking at individual data values. We're looking at the average. So let's suppose that we use the mean from a random sample of 20 as a point estimate. So just an estimate of the mean. Point estimate is just estimating the mean. And would it be unusual for the error to be over $100? So I don't think so, right? So this means error is $100, but that's less than the expected error of 136.486. So it would not be unusual because it's within our expected error. You could also find z-score, but we already did this work, so I'm not going to. So let's see what happens when we change sample size. So what's the expected error when we're using the mean from a random sample, but this time we're gonna do size 85. So above we did size 20. So we're gonna to have to find a new standard deviation because 20 has now changed. So let's find a new sigma. So it'll be sigma over square root n. So we take the original sigma, the population, the 30519, and we divide by the sample size. And it's gonna be even smaller because as we get bigger samples, we're gonna have less error. Meaning we're gonna get better estimates of the average. So if we plug this into the calculator, I got 33.103, which is smaller than 68 last time. Last time we got 68. So less error, larger samples have less error. Uh, and then to find expected error, we just do two times the standard deviation, which I wrote two times standard deviation. So two times 33.103, and we get an expected error of only 66.206. So this is telling me that if I take samples of size 85, my average should be within plus or minus 66.206 of the real average. So this is section or chapter is going to lead us into making estimates of the actual average from a sample. It's going to tell us how close we are to the actual average. So as we get bigger samples, we should be getting better and better estimates. So let's just do a few key points and we'll end the video. So just like proportions, if we estimate mu by X bar for us to get the exact value, um, the probability that X bar equals X exactly the same average is about zero, right? The whole idea of chapter seven is that, and statistics overall is that we're not gonna get the exact value, but we will be close. Um, the fact that mu of x bar equals mu, so the average of the sample means equals the average, tells us that all of our guesses are centered around the average, are centered around mu, this thing we're trying to estimate. So we're taking samples, right, because we want to estimate the real, uh, the real average. 
sigma of x bar equals sigma over square root n tells us that the x bars get closer to their center as the sample size increases, right? That means basically we get less error. So that's a good thing. And so if we increase our sample size, our x bars get closer to mu, and that means um, specific x bar we randomly choose will probably be good estimates of mu. So as our n gets bigger, we're confident that we're making good estimates of the average. And the only thing we need to figure out now is the shape and distribution, shape of the distribution of the sample means, so that way we can actually start making some predictions.